Welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. We're going to do Moon Knight today. Woo! For all of you out there, Moon Knight fans, people have been asking us to do Moon Knight forever. And I'm like, Moon Knight's not big enough hmm. for us to succeed. Maybe he will be after this. I do. Yeah, we'll, yeah. yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get the Moon gravy Knight. train going. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like, here's the thing. Moon Knight has, it's never been a better time to be a Moon Knight fan than now. Really? Because Moon Knight has had an unprecedented amount of good stuff happening. All right. Starting with... Actually, the 2006 Charlie Houston run, they never actually stopped making Moon Knight after this. Uh, unfortunately, Bendis took over after a big gap, mm. and he made it really, really bad. Oh. oh. But then, Warren Ellis took over Moon Knight, which is like, holy crap. And then Jeff Lemire, and it just, it got really good. Uh -huh. And they're doing their own thing. They're spinning their own, like, ideas and mythology with Moon Knight, and... It's just like I said, like it's never been a better time to be a Moon Knight fan than now because you have an unprecedented amount of really awesome Moon Knight stories. Unless you're always been a Moon Knight fan, in which case you've always had a plethora of great Moon Knight right. stories. And now they're like destroying it, probably. Right. right? I, I, I don't know anybody who was a Moon Knight fan who doesn't love Moon Knight now. Okay, that's good. And oh. I actually, I think I know. That's hard to do. One of the largest Moon Knight fans, also. Oh, really? Yeah, we worked in with him a couple world? times. He's the biggest Moon Knight fan I've ever seen. Wow. And he not only endorsed this book. But also has said that it's never been a better time. <laughs> All right. And I'm like, well, I'll take your word you for it, buddy. authority then. Yeah. I actually saw in the wild a Moon Knight cardboard cutout of Moon Knight. And I was like, really? <laughs> and I asked him about it, and he was like, I have two already. <laughs> two? Two. What? On the you same one. What do you need? Oh. Yeah. You know, to frame out. Probably it's they're on either side of his toilet, you know. Because <laughs> they're both white. I don't know. The idea is that he's just that big of a Moon Knight fan. Right. He's, Two of the same. In case one gets like damaged. Exactly. Like yeah, one's in storage. <laughs> That's sweet. Well, because like who is gonna make them? Right. Like I'm never gonna get them again. Like, yeah. This is it. That's what it actually felt like to be a comic book fan like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like whenever anything in the wild came up of any comic book you might have liked. That's why I have like two the Max figures. Right. I'll never get this again. And sure enough, and you were correct. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank we're gonna God. we're gonna do Moon Knight the Bottom. This is written by Charlie Houston with art by David Finch. Oh. It came out in 2006. I have a very interesting history with this book, as do mm. you a little bit, uh, because the first New York Comic Con that ever was in the modern parlance and that we ever went to was in 2006. And it was much, much, much different from the way it is now. Mm -hmm. and there were way fewer people and there was... And Marvel was in a very different place at the time as well. Mm -hmm. Marvel had just enjoyed a little bit of a windfall from their uh, Marvel Knights initiative, and they had been making some major changes, and Casada and Jemis and Bendis and everybody are like working around the clock to make things different. And uh, so we're walking the floor, and Marvel has a pretty prominent booth, uh, but not nearly as prominent as it would become. Uh, and there was this go-getter Marvel representative who was like, you guys! Do you like Moon Knight? And I went, <laughs> no. <laughs> because like who would admit to liking Moon Knight out in the open like right, that? Right. And she goes, well, the, the writer of the upcoming Moon Knight series, upcoming, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not out yet, there's no fanfare, the writer of the upcoming Moon Knight series is over there signing posters if you want to get a copy. And I'm like, <laughs> I just said I don't like Moon Knight. But on a lark I went like, Let's, let's look into the face of the man who dares to make Moon Knight cool. So we go up to the no line. Yep. And there's Charlie Houston. And he's a very like, affable, friendly guy. He's sitting there. And he's like, hi, you like Moon Knight? I'm like, no. <laughs> and he's like, well, I'm writing it. And I go, that's really cool, man. I go, listen, if you can make Moon Knight cool, I'll buy every issue until you're not writing it anymore. Yeah. I'm going to make a deal with you. And he's like, I would appreciate it. He's like, I promise you, it's cool. Okay. Like, okay. So I got my poster signed <laughs> by Charlie Houston right here. All right. Wow. That's a Why poster, is it folded I guess. Up? <laughs> because I needed to tuck it in my pocket to leave. Well, it's also got stuff on the back. Oh, yeah. It's got ads for... Oh, a real poster. <laughs> What's funny is uh, we also have Annihilation on back issues. Here's the ad for it right here. Oh, I guess it was always folded that way then. It was yeah. folded in half. Yeah. Then I folded it in quarters. Uh, I, do remember, I, I remember the poster. Yeah. I don't remember that story at all. Well, wow. good thing. You, I, I don't even think you read it. I think I bought it because that book didn't come out when we were No, I know. Poster. I meant like, I don't even remember 
any of this happening. Oh, this experience? Yeah. Maybe you were like, enjoy the line, pal. <laughs> The no line? The no line. Well, enjoy wasting your time meeting the guy who's going to, like, fall into irrelevancy. Charlie Houston, by the way, was a novelist, a crime novelist, and had no experience with comics at all. Oh, wow. Which, back then, so, I was like, oh, cool, then he's going to do a great job. So, they gave him Moon Knight? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. I don't know, because there's, like, a mythological element to it. Yeah. Yeah, but there's also a crime... Kind of. Element. <laughs> this, this was the bottom is all about reestablishing Moon Knight in the Marvel Isn't it universe. Like kind of? It uh, is. No, I just felt like you kind of stalled out there. There's a crime. There's a like, crime thing. There are crimes. <laughs> He's a crime fighter. He fights and solves, kind of. Well, everybody calls him Marvel's Batman. Because okay. he's a badass and yeah. he's, he has a big cape. Oh, and Batman's the world's greatest detective. He's not a detective. Yeah, well, you said he's Marvel's Batman. That's is what it, everybody calls him. I said oh. that people call him that. Is that's it, not isn't accurate. Daredevil like Marvel's Batman? Yes. Because he's blind like a bat. <laughs> yep. And he punches criminals. Uh, and he has a hard on for justice. Yep. Yeah. Right. He's Batman. And he loves his city. And yeah, and he loves his city. You're writing Moon Knight. You've never written for comics before. You can pretty much probably do anything you want. Yeah. Right. If you wanted to, you could just be like, Moon Knight. And... His secret identity is anything I want, because who cares? But no he one... had a secret identity, right? He had three secret identities. Oh, I see. When I was a fledgling Continue. comic fan, my comic book retailer was like, hey, you know, if you like Batman, you, you should check out Moon Knight, because it's like, if Batman had three secret identities. And I'm like, that's not an appeal. Yeah. I don't, that's that nothing. Sounds, what that is that? sounds like that's a bizarre. lot to have to pay yeah, attention to. Yeah, that sounds overly complicated. Sounds like a lot of work. And actually, it's more like his four identities, because it's Mark, Steve, Jake, and Moon Knight. Right. Well, no, Moon well. Knight is, is the true. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's, all, all those three are masks. Moon Knight is the real face of the Some character. Some people would argue that about Batman and Bruce Wayne. Well, they, they've said that a million times. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so, this is this kind of gets into the origin a little bit, but to set the stage about where Moon Knight was when he first came about, there was another mercenary who worked with him who was a legionnaire. Ah. And he teams up with Mark when Mark decides to become Moon Knight to support him. So he's French? Yeah. His, his oui. code name is Frenchie. So wait. At least it's it, not like Frogman. No. Is, well, no, there's a lot of Marlon yeah. is also French. Like the the baguette. <laughs> yeah. No, he's he just flies the moon copter. The moon copter. Okay, hold on. Can we just back up real quick? Is Marlene still in the picture during this By time? By this period? time? No. No. Okay, good. Does she she like, does appear in the book. Well, because I was gonna say, like, does she know that he's got like he's just like, okay, I'll be Mark Spector, but then when we're out on the town, you're gonna call me Steven. Yes. Because I'm Stephen Grant. Oh yeah. Because Stephen Grant's wealthy, but Mark Spector is dead? I don't know. I'm right? sorry, this sounds like really complicated. I was just gonna Can give you some pity not? sex for like <laughs> kicking the crap out of the guy who killed my dad, but like <laughs> She's on board. No, she's like his gal Friday for okay. uh, throughout the entire series, pretty much. The um, previous series? Or yeah. Okay. Well, in the previous... Way back in time. Before they canceled it. Oh, I see. And Moon Knight has been like put through the ringer in terms of Marvel mm. continuity and chronology for a while. Like He was a member of the West Coast Avengers. When th He goes wherever they need a, a character that looks kind of fun and distinct. Ah. That's, his book had been canceled numerous times. I mean, even the West Coast Avengers eventually fell under the cancellation pen. <laughs> but uh, so went Moon Knight with okay. his relevancy. And then... Houston's like, oh, well, I'll take it. And what's cool is, he, like I said before, he could have done anything with it. And instead, he uses every iota of the continuity and rogues gallery of Moon Knight That's cool. to reintroduce Moon Knight. Okay. It's like Houston went, Moon Knight's cool. And he had a legitimate pitch. And so he executed it. Right. And so the pitch cool. was, it's like a little bit of a flashback where we get to see some cool... Early 2000s era David Finch art, where Moon Knight is kind of like kicking around the rooftops of New York, going to beat the crap out of some gangs. It looks better than great. This looks fucking awesome. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> like, <laughs> if, if ever you were going to be convinced that Moon Knight is cool, you should pick up the bottom. Yeah, it's like they were like, Moon Knight, go. Like, yeah. We are, <laughs> we're all in on Moon Knight. You yeah. will think Moon Knight is cool. I mean, they, he said it. He, Said you'd think it was cool. Oh yeah, no, he says yeah, uh, because he knew he knew he, what it was gonna he, look like. He makes a comment <laughs> about how he's like, you know, all the other superheroes kind of make fun of me because I wear white, and it's like, and I skulk in the shadows and I kick the crap out of like the underbelly of crime, and so why would they, why would I do that? 
It's like I wear white so that they can see me coming. And you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. That's a cool way to use that. Like a red coat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't need camouflage. No, exactly. That didn't work out so well, though. <laughs> but he talks about how, like, everything that he is and does is... Moon-themed? Is moon-themed. <laughs> And in deference <laughs> or to... Or night-themed. Well, it's, it's, in, it's in deference to the god he serves. Right. It's like everything I do is in service to my god. Because, right. like, he saved me I in the desert. Because I saw him. I saw him. he's real. <laughs> right. And he brought me back to life. Right. And he's done it a couple of times. Like, I've oh. died before. And Khonshu has saw fit to, brought me, to bring me back and make me his avatar and his in service to his... His divine influence and what and Moon and, and Contra's like a vengeful bastard god who just wants to see like people wrecked in his name. Interesting. What is that? Do they get that from anything, or do they just make that up in this book? No, like, they make they get that. Is like Conchu? Is there? Is that like historical? Like oh, is there, there actually a is there actually a Conchu? I believe there is a Conchu, but it's not treated like this. And okay. it's funny because they explore the whole idea that like. Khonshu is a god, but Thor is also a god, mm. and there are gods, but no one's heard of Khonshu. <laughs> like no one knows Khonshu. Right. Like Odin didn't Khonshu meet doesn't, him. Like, walk around and talk to the. Other well, but gods also that the other gods in the Marvel universe, like no one is aware of him. Right. You know, so like Mo Moon Knight's like, yeah, and Khonshu, and they're like, what's a Khonshu? I've never met him. Right. <laughs> and where where does he live? Yeah, I don't like, think he's I've the god ever... of the moon, and they're like, oh. That sounds like bullshit. Yeah. Because I'm the god of thunder. Right. And I, like, we are all friends. Yeah, we know <laughs> each other. And stuff, and I never heard of no Khonshu. Right. And so you're kind of like, oh, so it calls into question, like, who Khonshu is, and, like, maybe Khonshu isn't really, like, a god. Maybe, like, how Mephisto isn't really the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe Khonshu's really, like, an alien or something. Right, right. And he's just really powerful. Oh, the way like, that, like a demon. Right. They don't really get into it too specifically about sure. what, about the origins of Khonshu, but I really like the idea that like Khonshu ain't no friendly deity. Right. right. And maybe he's not even really a deity at all. Like, maybe, maybe he's just... not even fucking real and he's just crazy. Yeah. And the idea but is But then that... how would he come back? Right. Well, maybe he just recovered, you know. <laughs> but like really well? Like medicine. From all those bullets? <laughs> yeah. yeah. you know. But like, they... He thought he was going to die, but it, it missed all his organs and he was just in I thought yeah. I was going to die, but then I got better. But then yeah. it's interesting because the idea is that like trying to maintain all those identities actually gave Mark Spector like personality disassociative disorder. Oh. And so he starts to like I? I don't even know. But now he like no, he actually has like multiple personality disorders oh. as well. So he starts to like lose it. Ew. And that's been the big character explanation for people after this where they're like, "Oh, but like he had three identities, but what if they were what if he was crazy and they all had voices in his head?" And it's like, "All right. I guess you want to go there. That's fine." Really they don't really do that in this. He looks like what Mark Hamill looks like now. <laughs> he really does. Uh, he does. Well, that's your. It, that's that's how you show that he's hit rock bottom because he's got like right. the beard and the long hair. But there, but Sorry, the, the whole the whole first arc or act of the first issue is to establish like what you think you know and what you should be aware of with Moon Knight, mm -hmm. his origins, how badass he is, and like all the things that you want to see from a Moon Knight book. Right mm -hmm. now, it's established that this is now, and Mark Spector's in a wheelchair and he's an alcoholic, and everything that made him who he was and strong is gone. Mm. Frenchie, the tech, the girl, the suit, and even the uh, the abilities. Oh. oh. And so, he just, every night he begs Khonshu to give him another chance to be a hero again. Oh. And like, that's your establishing shot of Moon Knight now. What happened? What happened indeed. And so, we do get a flashback about what happens to Moon Knight, and we see like, images of Mark Spector like, desperately taking like opiates to deal with the pain uh, and how like we see flashbacks to some grisly fight that Moon Knight was involved in that caused the shattering of his legs oh. and like how it just all devolved like Moon Knight lost a great battle and then he blamed Khonshu I, mean, I really love the way David Finch like really plays with he, with, with the device of, he does. of he, telling the story he's very obviously fighting a werewolf uh, you know it's, affected right. by the moon he's fighting something he, it's, <laughs> yeah. spoilers it's Bushman of course. Is, Bush is he a werewolf? No, Bushman filed his teeth down to be like these horrible, Ooh. jagged, like, fangs. Gross. Yeah, he is gross. He gets grosser. <laughs> oh! So, Don't worry. Okay! But we see that, like, and He's that's... not yet begun to and, get gross. And by the way, like, that would have been enough. Right, yeah, yeah. You, I got it, right there. Yeah. Got oh, it. Frenchie walks out on him, and then you see, like, Frenchie didn't have legs. Like, Frenchie lost his legs at some oh. point or another during oh. the story. Um, he but pushed everyone away from him. He pushed everybody away from him. Marlene's the last one to go, and, mm. of course... 
uh, Mark like signs away everything and he loses everything and then Marlene's like trying to show him a tender hand and then he shows him a more aggressive one by backhanding her. Oh, so wow. wait, this is forgiven though? This is forgiven. What? <laughs> yeah, but he hit her. I mean, not... Oh, you mean by the fandom? Yeah. No one said that he wasn't a son of a bitch. It's fair. I was going to say, because, you know... Yeah. Hank Pimps flaps one. I know. Yeah. <laughs> he hits one person while he is insane. He doesn't get off the hook. Spider-Man does it. He's insane, too. He, he knocks Mary Jane across the room. We've done this a million times in the show. <laughs> Mark, uh, Mark Spector also hit his girlfriend in the face with full force. Jesus. And we're going to give him a pass. And people are still Moon Knight fans. Oh, big time. Like, you're Moon Knight! Like, you're Moon Knight! They don't, they don't remember him for it. Now, maybe it's because he was taking pills and da-da-da. Like, he was also at rock bottom yeah, and stuff. Yeah, but, like, Hank Pym was, like, affected, right? Oh, yeah. But wasn't that retconned, or was it? I mean, it depends on which version you're talking yeah. about. But in the story, it's just that, like, he was, he was losing his mind. He was a yellow jacket at that time. I would give him a pass. But we're not going to. So. <laughs> but like, why? Yeah, but <laughs> it's but, more fun. Than and I feel bad because like Hank, Hank Pym's done. He's tried, but like no, not organically. It yeah. Anyway, so the last rung on rock bottom on the rock bottom ladder is that he takes the shroud off of the the Conchu statue, which he, by the way, took from Egypt, <laughs> who when he was rescued and brought Ooh. home. That was, and he did that like in the so origin. He, like stole an artifact. Oh yeah. But, you know, it belongs to I mean, they weren't using yeah, it. Yeah, but it wanted him to, right? It did. Yeah. But uh, but he, he spat in its face. Oh. Oh. I thought Conchu was like a bird. That's a later interpretation. I, I only saw that because, like, I mean, I remember seeing that at one point, but also, like, his hood. He looks like an owl. He looks yeah. like an owl. Yeah, and I think they play with that later, like, with the visuals of his shroud and with mm. Conchu. Right. Like, as well. Okay. Yeah, it's not like they thought of it. It was more like... Hey, wouldn't it be cool if he looked like an owl, though? Yeah. And I think later they were just like, hey, make Concho a bird skull now. Yeah. And so it's so just it like... it looks like his cool hood. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And they did that, and it does look cool. I'm not going to argue. Yeah. But... Uh, They're not wrong. The next issue is a flashback to the Jesus. inciting incident. Okay. Which is that Moon Knight fought Bushman, and it got really, really rough. Yeah. I mean, it looks like he won. Yeah, he defeated him, and then Bushman didn't give up. Oh. Oh. So like, I'm still alive, though. So he throws Moon Knight against like a brick wall, which actually like Ooh. hits his head and makes him kind of fuzzy. So oh. Bushman breaks out a knife, and then the, it just it just gets more and more grisly and grotesque. Bushman uh, looks like a lunatic. He, yeah. I mean, he is one, and he definitely looks like one. Like, and we want to establish that Bushman is like really, really gross and scary looking. He's like he's like. The like you ever see like there's like you know in like an apocalyptic game or whatever when they put like a clown or something yeah in there that's what he looks like yeah mm. he does so he looks cool he does look cool I mean what? it's interesting I like that those like flames around his eyes that's fucking badass I've never seen that before yeah no it's like black and then it's flames yeah that's interesting it's cool it's all part of his like daily ritual <laughs> you don't think those are tattooed on. They probably are. He doesn't want to do that every day. It's not like yeah, he's... No, it, this is not the kind of guy who has like a 401k and a it's, day job. He's no. not sitting in a chair for eight hours in makeup. Also, what the hell happened to his tongue? Oh, he did something to it. What do you mean? It's gross. Well, it's supposed it's to be like, gross. It's David Finch. It's ultra... But he's like a dude. He's right. He was like a man. Oh, yeah. yeah. A man can't have a tongue like that. It's way too long. I agree. Well, I've seen, I've seen some pretty long tongues in my time. Anyway, so Bushman knocks Moon Knight off of the roof, of course, where they were fighting. And... Moon Knight hits like all the, <laughs> all, uh, yeah, all the fire escapes, the and fire stuff. escapes and scaffolding, on the way down, and he hits them with his like knees and uh, shins. Yeah, and then ultimately like falls to the ground and he's like wrecked. Yeah, and then Bushman just like rappels down. He's like, hey, hey it's, you're done now. Here we go. By the way, love it. No dialogue. Yeah. It's just a grisly fight. The yeah. only thing you would hear from this fight are like guttural sound effects. Right. Moon Knight's just helplessly lying on the ground and he takes out one of his little like moon shurkins. Yeah. He throws it at Bushman and it like kind of like hooks around and right before Bushman's about to plunge a knife into him it hits him in the face and Bushman falls down too and then Bushman's just like right there with him like face to face. Yeah. So Bushman takes his creepy file teeth and he digs them into Moon Knight's face. Oh my God. And then Moon Knight knocks him off and then he grabs one of his shurikens, and then he carves Bushman's face off of his skull. Now he's Red Skull. <laughs> oh, fuck. Just holds it up and calls out the name of Khonshu to the full moon above him. 
And wow. that's kind of like the last fight for Moon Knight. So he kills Bushman. Yeah. But and his legs are destroyed. So wait, the superhero community has no problem with this? I'm sure the he- superhero community know who Bushman is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just... Who did what to who now? I'm sorry. I don't know anyone who's involved in this in, in this situation you're describing. <laughs> Come Moon on, Knight. man. I was an Avenger. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, which one? <laughs> West, West Coast. Coast. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Everybody says that because nobody knows who's on exactly. the West Coast Avengers. I, I would have no way of knowing if you're telling the truth or not. Right. I don't know who any of them were. Right. <laughs> It's like uh, it's like graduating from that school that burned down. Yeah, that graduating class had eighty thousand students in it. So uh, then we're treated to uh, another character that is from Moon Knight's past. Crawley basically is Mark Spector's errand boy. He brings prescriptions to the Dwayne Reed and gets Mark uh, Spector's Dwayne opiates. Reed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I'm like, hey, I think th- I probably know this quarter. <laughs> and Crawley's like, well, I'm gonna hang around for a minute. Inspector's like, something on your mind. And Crawley's like, dude, get out of here. Like, stop wallowing in your self-pity right. and everything. Don't forget, uh, while Spectre was sitting in his wheelchair, he like was remembering his past, and he pulls the shroud off of Conchu. Yeah. And Crawley notices this, and he's like, hey, I noticed you took the, uh, the thing off the statue. Are you doing a little bit of praying or something? And he's like, he's like don't, don't talk to me about like my past or anything. He's just really miserable. He's, he's, like, he's, he's, like, the, he's the grumpy, right. you know, reluctant hero. He's like, he, Crawley's like, maybe, maybe I'll pray a little bit. Maybe, hey, hey got you. Well, yeah, I'll be Moon Knight. Yeah, exactly. I'm down. Hey! <laughs> no, Crawley is, has is, no interest. Is Crawley supposed to be like the dude? He's... <laughs> like visually? <laughs> no, no, he does look like this. He's supposed to look like a junkie. Oh, okay. The whole pretense of going there is to give him his pills, but he also has some like news, and he's like, mm. uh, and he tries to get Spectre to kind of like open up about his past and kind of like be open to the idea of seeing friendly faces, mm. which Spectre's having none of. Mm-hmm. Right. And then he says like, well, I had a I had occasion to meet with with uh, with a, a mutual acquaintance of ours, and they're having a, a spot of trouble. So if you if you're if you're of a mind, you might want to help them out. And Spectre's like, meh. And then he's like he's like filling up pills. He goes, you know, if you have time. Right. Since you spend all of it just sitting just here fucking yeah. sitting in your own here. filth, like taking pills. Right. So then uh, Samuels, the butler, is like, uh, Mr. Spectre, would you like to be, would you, shall I be bringing you your lunch today? He goes, no, get the car. I'll, I'll be having it out. And Samuels like, oh, that's great. <laughs> so then he, okay. he, ta- he looks at the pills he poured himself, and then he puts them back into the, in the thing. Mm. And he's going out. And you're like, oh. And he's going to go see Frenchie. Oh. Um, and Samuels is like, who's this? No, he knows. No. <laughs> but he's like, yo. <laughs> But uh, then we meet a new character who is part of an old villain group of Moon Knights. What? Um, oh, 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 sorry. Not a villain group of Moon Knights. No, it's, it's Moon Knights uh, apostrophe, apostrophe S. S. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but we meet this, this crazy looking dude in this like noir-esque office. And seemingly he has like a superpower. And his power is when he looks at somebody, he knows everything about who they are. And it's not really so much like it, when he is describing his power to a prostitute or a girl he wooed. I'm assuming it's a prostitute. <laughs> he describes it as like, everybody has a tell. Everybody has like something about them that betrays everything about who they are. Mm. And, and maybe I can always see it. Yes. And maybe it's visualized through art, but it seems like the power is that he can see like the person being dissected Intellectually, mm-hmm. where it, po- it has arrows pointing at all the different parts yeah. of them, wow. and describing like who they are. It's like this person will die unloved, uh-huh. and he's he's a rapist and he's a douche and he like just wants his dad's approval and stuff. Right. It's so, like right. once he looks at them, he can he can size them he can up, dress he's them super down. Super intuitive about people. Exactly. He's like a weird version of Karnak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He kind of is. You see the flaw in everybody. He is a little bit of Karnak. Yeah. But like. But a bad but, guy. But he can only attack you like emotionally. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, he, and he does, by the way. Like he he throws something at the prostitute, and she's like, "You you bastard!" And she leaves, and he's mm-hmm. like, eh, "I'll get another one." Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but he's being hired by a clandestine organization who's saying like, "Oh, Asset Prime is moving." And as a prime inspector, ah. and he's under the watchful eye of this clandestine organization, and they bring in this this crazy looking dude, and he is going to be hired to execute this plan against Spectre. That like 
No. Spectre's been under surveillance by this organization for right. a long time. Why well, he's just sitting there? What are they? Well, because he just defeated them before. Oh. But is the is the plot against Spectre or the plot against, is against Steven? Or oh, right. right. <laughs> it's against all of those. <laughs> they know. They do. Oh. Yeah. That's not good. Oh yeah, but he's also not doing anything, and is like, what are they going to take away from him? Right. So he they his statue. He hasn't yeah. suffered enough. Right. So they they run down his origin. <laughs> Okay. And uh, it's funny because they, they try to explain to the dude what the origin is, and he's like, I got it. Like, I read the profile, and I know the type, and I've got it. Yeah, I know him already better than he knows himself. Right. So then uh, we run into this, like, we go to this French restaurant that is co-owned by Frenchie and his business partner. Oh. Ooh. And it's like, oh, Frenchie worked out okay. Nice. Wow. Frenchie embraces Spectre, and For their reintroduction, Frenchie and Spectre, is punctuated by the origin of Moon Knight. Moon Knight was Mark Spector, this uh, mer mercenary who worked with Frenchie and Bushman, and they were hired by this like French archaeologist to like protect them in this excavation of this Egyptian site and also protect his beautiful daughter. Mm -hmm. And then Bushman's like, ah, I like the idea where I go across you and take all your stuff. Right. <laughs> and uh, he, then he assassinates the father, and Spector leaves him for dead. Spector crawls in the desert, begs Khonshu for like not dying and then Conchu delivers. <laughs> Whether he actually begs him or not is is, is in question, but who cares? Right. So Conchu certainly interpreted that way. Definitely. Or Conchu saw something within him that was like, here's a gullible sap who'll believe anything that an alien or weirdo <laughs> god will tell him. Which I mean, is wouldn't you? And he's right. <laughs> so uh, Spectre is talking to Frenchie and he's like, so like uh, business looking good. You took a partner. And uh, Frenchie says, Mark, like, Rob is not my partner. He's my partner. Oh. <gasps> oh. And it turns out that, like, Frenchie never left Mark's side, despite all the zany Moon Knight stuff, because he was in love with him. Oh. Aww. And that's the retcon oh, for, 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 for Frenchie. And it's fine. Like, you yeah. know what? Cool. You want to retcon that? You're paying homage to everything else that made, made right. Moon Knight who he is. <laughs> Making Frenchie gay, not a problem yeah. for anybody. <laughs> So uh, it's funny because Frenchie was not gay in the comics and he did have dalliances with ladies. Right. And <laughs> it's funny because Spectre calls him on it, which is cool that Houston, a not comic book author, <laughs> would care to like, No, 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 no. I know that I know where you're going women, with this. But and it's like either he had an amazing editor who's like, they're going to ask, do this. Or Houston's just a big Moon Knight fan. Mm -hmm. Like a, a secret Moon Knight fan. And yeah. if he is, it's weird that he's never written Moon Knight again. Hmm. That said, uh, it's funny because he's like, there's all these women that you were banging. And he's like, well, just because I can cook an omelet doesn't make me make me a chef. <laughs> and it's like, fair enough. Okay. <laughs> Cary Grant had children. Yeah. So, you know, right yeah, on. It definitely happened. There's a lot of cool things about glasses. Yeah. Well, characters just, with glasses. It's a great opportunity to do something with it. Yeah. You know, it's all about reflection and, yeah. and, and showing something on the other side of the room or some kind of other visual without showing that visual and mm -hmm. you can also frame it around a person's face it's 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 cool Plus it makes people look cool oh definitely oh no I, I i have reflective sunglasses because they look awesome well yeah, yeah it's also like doing it like that I, I don't know who did it first but you see it a lot in, in manga mm -hmm. especially mm. with a more villainous character where yeah. the, their face will be cast They're in shadow and like they're yeah yeah they glow or something yeah it's like what yeah <laughs> that happened a lot in sailor moon or um evangelion mm. like yeah yeah. Well, in like a black and white book, it probably is a cool effect. Yeah. yeah. Well, even in the anime for like Sailor Moon, they did it still. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's just, it's just like, it's an interesting concept because it's like glasses typically indicate like, you know, like intelligence or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But in this sense, when you do it like that, like it's, you don't know who that is. And yeah. Like, you know. Well, because they always, co well, yeah. Because they're not windows. Like they're actually like a buffer between yeah. the true self and the, on the outside mm -hmm. world. Uh, but it's deep. Funny because yeah, thank you. <laughs> But uh, he says, like, you know, did, did everybody know that you were gay except me? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, like Marlena knew. You're kind of oblivious. Yeah. Like, sorry. And Marlena knew, and she was just like, yeah, but I mean, French, you don't have a chance, chance in the world here, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. He's with me. He's with me. No, she was friends. Like, he, he actually, they both confided in each other over, like, their mutual love of him. Oh. Like, when he would hurt himself or he would go out there, he would, like, make, take risks. Like, they right. both were, like, pining for him. 
Interesting. So like, that's a neat little interpretation of that. But Mark was in love with Conch. <laughs> yeah, he and Justice. Yeah. I think he's. It's, he doesn't and, even talk about Justice. Possibly he only Stephen cares. Grant. I don't know. Yeah, he's. It's all. <laughs> yeah, and another personality from my deviant side. Maybe maybe Frenchie was in love with Mark, but Marlene loved Stephen. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. It's right. Or yeah. Sure. Moon Knight. Or... So like, that's the that's the trouble with having so many damn identities. It's hard to keep them all straight. Right. But it's funny because. Uh, then Mark's like, so is this why you asked me to come out here? Like, because you wanted to tell me you were gay all these years and that you were in love with me? And Frenchie's like, what? I didn't, I didn't invite you out here. Uh-oh. Inspector's like, mm, I'm being played. Uh, he's like, <laughs> Mark doesn't like this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, he's like so pissed at Crawley for screwing right. things up. Right. And uh, and he's like, come on, like don't like don't leave things like this between us. Like don't be a jerk. Right. And he's like, but what who cares why you're here? Yeah. Like, it like we're 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 here now. And he's like, you're a liar. That's what you are. You oh, lied to fine. me my entire oh, life. Oh, right. What is oh. he for? <laughs> <laughs> he certainly acts like you're a liar. <laughs> yeah. He goes back to Conchu and he's just like looking at it like, meh, Conchu, you're such a dick. Arranging just all these things. sitting there. Right, sitting staring. there being a statue. <laughs> yeah. Not answering. Not, not giving me my Moon Knight powers. Yeah. yeah. You're just letting me be a douche sitting that, in this chair. I ripped that guy's face off in your name. Yeah. I think you owe me. <laughs> right? And my, my knees are still wrecked. Uh, so yeah, what then is, we... What are you going to do about my legs, Conchu? <laughs> <laughs> So then we establish that like, so this clandestine organization that's running this like crazy dude is called the committee. And ah. the committee was a group of like wealthy douches who sought to destroy Moon Knight back when Moon Knight was a book. Why? Why not? Why indeed? Doesn't matter. No, like, do they explain it or? Well, like, they establish why this committee works. Okay, because yeah. I was gonna say, like, seemingly no one cares that Moon Knight's even like operating, but mm -hmm. these guys were like, no! Yeah. No, I don't like you. <laughs> well, no, they, they're they like seemingly everything is working as they have wanted it to. Like they're mm. the ones who were, well, no, they, they didn't make him leave. They're more like they've been watching him. They're like, oh, subject like prime is but, like, out they, there. They're like happy that he left you. They're like, cool. Well, they're like, great. Maybe he'll like make some friends and build up a life and then we can destroy him. <laughs> because the idea is that the committee originally was this group of like wealthy autocrats who were screwing over like people and Moon Knight decided to kick their ass. This committee is the sons of the fathers who ran the original committee ah. and they want revenge on Moon Knight. Right. So it's like Taken 2. It's Taken 2. Ten years before <laughs> Taken 2. Okay. <laughs> so they, they're they like, this is excellent. Uh, like the, the prime asset is out there. He's reconnecting with his old life. This is perfect. And like, we're Don't working Don't you have anything better to do with your time? Like, didn't the original committee? Like, the idea is that, yeah. like, no. <laughs> you know, like, the joke is that, like, these people are stupid. Yeah. And it's it's further compounded by... He tasks by, me. He tasks me. He tasks me and I shall have him. <laughs> Seriously, that is, like, literally what it is. And, and in fact, like, Does... the, 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 the crazy dude who's hired by the committee... As like a consultant slash yeah. like helper to destroy Moon Knight, he's like, yeah. Let me cut to the chase here. Let me guess. Like part of your plan is that like you you get him out of his chair, you get him to start like working again, and then you take everything away from him. But like, what if one of your members got a little overzealous and implemented the plan a little too early? Someone in the committee is already like, what? When early? With right. the plan. Like, no, 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 I just no. want to kill him. Yeah. Like, just mess with him. Yeah. yeah. So, like, why, are we, why are we screwing around? Why are the cloak and dagger? Just, 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 just fuck kill him. him. Just fucking kill him. Come on. Is so, that Frenchie's leg? Yes. Yep. That, like, the mugger who attacked. So, like, we see the flash to what's actually happening, which mm -hmm. is seemingly at random, these, this, this outward gay couple is attacked by this aggressive person who then takes Frenchie's fake leg and nearly beats him to death with it. Yikes. And then Samuels tells Spectre, and then he goes to the hospital, and again, no dialogue. Mm -hmm. But we see, like, Mark meets Rob. Mark accepts Rob. Mark makes a vow for Frenchie. And then he goes to the alley, and he, like, gets the information about the mugger. And then he goes and he beats him savagely. Wow. Does he take his face off? No, it's but he does. Because that seems to be his M.O. No, yeah. now. Well, instead oh, he you has, take off one guy's face. Well, he does attack his face because he has a cane. <laughs> okay. And the guy goes at him with a knife, so he pulls his cane, and of course he's got a sword inside the cane, <laughs> and he stabs the dude through the cheek with it, Ooh. and then just leaves him there until he beats him with his cane. Okay. 
And Damn. so uh, this crazy dude is just like, okay. He's so, trying to find out why? Like, no. He just uh, he just falls for it. He's just like, oh, it's just a random act of violence. Yeah. At least it's not like one of the, this isn't one of those situations where it's like, oh, and the big twist is that, you know, Mark Spector really is crazy and Stephen Grant put a hit out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, no, no thank you. Because he's rich, like that. too. No, no, no. The Profile, who's the name of this dude who, like, can see. His name's The Profile? The profile. Yeah, The Profile. Like that show, The Profiler? Yeah. yeah. Like, you're the, like, comic storyteller? <laughs> That's right. And, so, and Ethan's the, the... The comic listener? Yeah, or the comic scientist, or a scientist... I don't know. <laughs> it's just whatever it is you're doing right now. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. So the profile is like explaining to them. He's like, so, yeah. So he describes the plan that they have yet to explain to him. Uh-huh. Because he's like, I've already seen that's it. That's what he yeah. does. And yeah. he's like, so that's, so that's, that, that's what you got? And they're that's like, what happened. Uh, yeah. So uh, unless you, they, and that's, that's to say that like, I would assume that's what it is if you provided me with an accurate profile. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, except that here's the thing. Uh, one of you screwed up. And then uh, that one person like reveals, he's like, well, yeah, I executed one of the final phases, like one of the final contingencies. And it was the Duchamp uh, or Duchamp uh, contingency. That's Frenchie's last name. Oh. Uh, oh, he shares the last... Uh. What? Duchamp was that artist who did that toilet thing. Yeah. What? There's like this artist. He was making a statement, but okay. basically he takes like a part of like a toilet or whatever turns it upside down and writes like um, El Mutt or something like that on it. And like, he's like, there, it's art. Ah. But it's not art. Like, I'm making fun of everybody. Right. And, and I'm now like, that's a thing. And everybody has to study it. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, dude. Chump. <laughs> I'm like, chump, chump yeah. <laughs> <laughs> knocking him out of the park today. <laughs> so anyway, because uh, it happened in that order, the prophet was like, you son of a bitch. Instead of breaking him, what you have now done, what you've now set into motion, is you've given him something to believe in now. Mm -hmm. You give him a taste for blood. He got revenge. He's already gotten revenge. He's already beaten like the, the, the guy senseless. He's already like started to beg Khonshu for more. Like for for the for the the ability to, to, to become Moon Knight again. You've actually doomed you yourselves. Yeah, he's like so it's I'm over. Out. Yeah. So the profiler is like Kill that guy. The guy who screwed up. That guy. Uh, and it turns out there's another member in the in the committee's office who's part of the like plan, and that's Taskmaster. Oh, Why would Taskmaster? Oh shit! Be oh. Taskmaster got to get paid. Well, that way that way they can say that, that he tasks them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they he tasks them. <laughs> he tasks them so much they must get the Taskmaster. <laughs> <laughs> For he's the master of Taskmaster. That's see. cool. Exactly. So Taskmaster kills that dude. Yeah. And then uh, basically they're like, okay, well go, go Taskmaster and go, go, go kill him before he can actually like become Moon Knight. Go forth and kill. And kill, please. You're free. And Taskmaster's funny because he says something like, you know, I've never, like, because Taskmaster has a power. And the power is that he can learn the ability, the fighting style of anybody he sees. Mm -hmm. So it's like if he sees someone fight, he now knows their fighting style. Oh, got it. Yep. Right. And he, when he's fighting, when he, when he inevitably does fight Moon Knight, because it's like, it's two beshrouded, becloaked, white yeah. characters. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you use Taskmaster? It'd uh, be a very confusing and difficult to follow yeah. a fight. Why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> Plus, Moon Knight carved out that guy's face. He looks like he doesn't have a face. Oh, it's, 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 all, it's like poetry, it rhymes. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. So, uh, Moon, so, so, so anyway, when they're about, when they're fighting, Taskmaster makes some pithy comment about how he's like, I've never even bothered to copy your moves because you're so freaking lame. He's, I thought he was going to be like, fucking Moon Knight. you know, <laughs> when the committee called me up, I was like, you want me to who? kill who? Moon Knight? Done. Uh, are, How much? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. So he's, uh, he's begging Khonshu for the, the power to like basically resurrect him again. Mm -hmm. Like resurrect him strong, you know, resurrect right, his, his to ability. To fix his legs. And then he looks up and he sees that 
Bushman's severed face is on Khonshu's face. I assumed that that was just the naturally the thing he would do. No, because we saw it before. We saw the face. It's I, I, I just mean, like, how is that not the next logical step for a person who just cuts someone's face off? and it's to put it on the face of his, his, of, of his god statue. Yeah. yeah. But, but it's all bleeding and shit. Like, it just happened. Exactly. Because then faceless Bushman comes out from behind him and he's like, Oh, boo-hoo-hoo. You were the sorriest piece of shit I've ever seen. Like, oh, Khonshu. Uh. <laughs> because the idea is that this is Khonshu. Khonshu has now adopted the visage of Moon Knight's like greatest execution in his name. Wow. So Khonshu is just a big dude. Right, but yeah. that means he was happy with that. He was, but also oh, like, or, but, but, he he, also... but his spirit was broken. Remember, he took his name in vain. He like he cursed Khonshu for letting him fall, yeah. letting his name, his knees get broken. So he's like, let's see what happens without me for a while. <laughs> It's like, no, I'm proud of you for doing that, but then you took my name in vain and you and you and you turned on me. Yep. Screw you. Now deal with this. Yeah. Deal with this fucking nightmare. Yeah, now deal with me, because now you're talking to me again. You believe in me again. Oh. Well now here I am and look at you. So I'm gonna fucking torment you and fuck with your head. So he does. So he's not really there, right? Bush Bushman's not really there? It's not really Bushman, it's it's Kanshu. Kanshu's adopting the look oh, of Bushman. Oh, Kanshu's like a dude now walking around. Oh, he Kanchu can be whatever he wants. He's a oh, god. I see. That's fucking creepy. Kanchu has many powers. Yeah. Right. This is this is what you wanted. You ripped off my face. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so Mark Spector is like, I don't doubt you anymore, and he, and he just stands there before the statue, and he's been like talking to him the entire time, and then Marlene shows up, and she's like, Have you gone utterly stark raving mad? Like, are you out of your mind? Like what? What are you doing? But he used to be Moon Knight. Why is she suddenly questioning this? Because now? she, like, I, I guess she, like, still talking to statues, huh? He didn't use to backhand her back then. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's, that probably caused cause her to question quite a few things. Right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, had she ever actually seen Conchu? No. Right. So we don't really know that Con. Like, I pretty much just have your word that Conchu is oh, real. Oh, sure. <laughs> I don't care how, you, like, how you motivate yourself to become Moon Knight. Right. <laughs> Yeah, whatever fucking magic fantasy bullshit you have to tell mm -hmm. yourself to fight crime, like, whatever. But, yeah. like, right. then it, like, went south. Right. <laughs> like, real fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was cute and funny at first. And, and we were having a good me. time. We're flying around in helicopters and beating the hell out of bad guys. We moved to California had yeah. a good time. And yeah. the statue thing seemed kind of harmless then. Right. Well, it was also, like, it's a remnant of my father's. Like, right. I, he excavated. I thought it was indifference to him, but it turns right. out you actually worship the freaking thing. <laughs> But, uh, but she's like, fucking lunatic. But no, she's not talking about him talking to the statue. She's like, are you insane? Like, did you think the police weren't going to investigate? Mm. Like, the, the, the sudden and savage near murder of this guy who beat our friend? Like, right. I went to his place. The police were there, and they want to know who half, like, beat the, 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 the devil out of this guy. Right. And she's like, what's wrong with you? Like, you're going you're gonna to bring the cops down on us and, like, screw everything up. Like, they want to know, like, you know, the Moon Knight's back and how they open up that case and everything. And he just looks at her and he says, Marlene, I'm standing. And she punches him in the face. And she's like, you always could stand, you son of a bitch. You just hurt yourself a little bit. <laughs> you just wallowed in self-pity. You got addicted to pills. Of course you could stand. Well, I'm talking about how our friend is in the hospital. And how you selfishly went and attacked his murderer or his near murderer. And now all you can think of to say is that you you can stand. You, Fair. you got old. That's all that happened. Yeah. Like, but then it got hard. And then you just immediately fell into like bottles of pills and alcohol. Mm -hmm. you, you freak. Like, get away from me. I mean, you came here. And then, yeah. <laughs> well, and then she sees the statue and she's like, oh, Jesus. Like, yeah. it's... It, and then Taskmaster shows up. Ah! Yep. Yay. And now, Marlene is also trained. She Because she lived with Moon Knight. Right. So like, you like, gotta, if you're gonna like live with me, you gotta learn to fight. Yeah. So she tries like to take okay. to hold her own, and Taskmaster's like, no. <laughs> so she gets slapped again? Uh, she gets punched. Okay. okay. But I love uh, Taskmaster's running dialogue through this thing, where he's just like, oh my god, like that was, that was intense. <laughs> like you you attacked me so that you could distract me from your boyfriend throwing a knife at me like ah that was pretty good <laughs> like a for effort that was fun yeah. but anyway, let, me, let me tell maybe you like 20 years ago that would have got me but uh but let me tell you something yeah you are the ass kick e in this scenario <laughs> <laughs> and so like he actually said that oh he does it's right there oh my god 
God. And I am the ass kicker, and That's... we have to just remember our rules here. Oh so what, here's what we're going to do. I'm brought here to send a message. You know, and the message is, I'm going to kill you really, really painfully. That's that's and that's the whole purpose of this fight. The Taskmaster <laughs> and and Deadpool hang out a lot. They fight sometimes. <laughs> in fact, uh, you can watch our episode Punisher versus Deadpool, in which Taskmaster is the main antagonist. Yep, and it's and pretty it's great. Fun. So he's just like, yeah. So anyway, let me explain to you the entire plot. There's this group called uh, the Committee. Fill we'll you in. You, you defeated them. Figured out jack shit yet? Because well, you're never going to. There's yeah. no more time. Yeah. So like, there was this committee. Uh, the book's gonna be over soon. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta wrap it up. <laughs> so like, and. The so he beats that he beats Mark and then he plays like a tape the committee recorded that's oh like we're God. the committee and we're the sons of the men that you destroyed and we're going to destroy you and he's like so anyway then we're going to make the mistake that everybody makes and leave you alive right now well but Taskmaster's there like Taskmaster's there to make sure that they can monologue but that he can't get the upper hand ah. so he's like beating on him and he's playing the tape and they're talking about how great he is and he's talking about how stupid they are. And how dumb this whole thing is. And he's like, <laughs> but like, anyway. Like, yeah, I mean, look, I know this is dumb, but they're paying me to do it. Yeah. So like, I'll do it. Put the tape into the VCR or into the DVD player or whatever. And it's playing on Mark's TV. And so he drags it. It's been playing while he's been beating on him. And he drags him over in front of the TV. He's going, so sit down and watch the tape. <laughs> And like so, it's just this this clandestine oh like group of men in suits in front of a beautiful view of the city, and they're like, "We have you, and we're going to blah blah blah, and we're going to destroy us." Well, anyway, so uh, well, that was fun. That was fun. Like, look, we don't need to play the rest of the tape, right? I can just kill you. <laughs> yeah, cool with you. They're, they're never gonna know if you saw the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, ugh. but it's great because he's just like, uh, Marlene gets the upper hand. Like she's she's gonna shoot him. Mm -hmm. And he like blocks it with his big taskmaster shield. Well, it's because she said, "Hey." Yeah. Well, because she's gonna she's gonna one line him. Because he's like, "I'm gonna kill you," and I'm but I'm but I'm, I have I, I have to kill your girlfriend first. So you gotta watch me do that. So hang in there. And she goes, "Hey, I'm not his girlfriend anymore." That's and she unloads into him, and he has the shield. And he goes, hey, "Oh, the shield isn't vibranium or anything. I gotta get a new shield now." <laughs> so he shoots an, it. he shoots an arrow into the barrel of her gun, and she's like, "He's like, there. You, you can't." You, you can't shoot the gun now. Wait there. I'm gonna I'm gonna beat him and I'm gonna kill you and then I'm gonna kill him. It's only two things, but it's getting kind of complicated. And then like there's this sound effect, scutch, and he goes scutch. And he looks down, and one of Moon Knight's like daggers is embedded in his foot. <laughs> it's the dagger that had already been embedded in Moon Knight's hand. Yeah, that he threw at him. He yeah. Just... He goes. Bleh! <laughs> and he's like, oh my god. And then Samuel shows up with a with a, with an elephant gun, just like <laughs> just Alfred, like Alfred the in the Predator, Predator Batman crossover, <laughs> and he goes, "Oh come on!" So he shoots Taskmaster out the window, and then uh, Mark Spector and, uh, and Marlene get in the car with Samuels, and they go to Long Island, where Spector's old mansion was okay. and still is, mm -hmm. and it's when Spector like crawled into himself he just abandoned it but the but the mansion's still there right so they he like still they, owns it yeah. Presumably. yeah yeah so they blast into the mansion and they go into, into the, the basement back cave. into yeah. the, uh, the moon cave oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> the moon cove yeah the night cave the crater if you will <laughs> <laughs> the dark side of the moon <laughs> it's a lot so it they says. go they go down there and we see like this cool like cave cool where like all of Moon Knight's tricks and traps are. Right. And they put him on like what is Who clearly, the hell is that? Oh, that? That's Netta. And Netta is like the nursemaid for Moon Knight. Is uh, there anyone who doesn't know who Moon Knight is? I mean, no. <laughs> but Moon Knight also had like a huge network of people who took care of him and right. made and facilitated stop. his bullshit. I'm just saying. It's just none of his personalities are geniuses. <laughs> So, well, he's not Batman. He's not like a crazy loner like Batman. Right. He's like, no, I have like friends and shit. Yeah. And In fact, I and because them, I have three different personalities, they all have their own friends and so they're all... It actually connected. gets pretty complicated. Yeah. So uh, Spectre gets put onto like the operating table and uh, Samuels gasses up the moon copter <laughs> and Marlene kind of like nurses him back to health a little bit. She just, she just patches him up. Yeah. But he's basically back... To full form. I mean, he's only, he's had one, his hand is messed up. Yeah, so they wrap the, the hand, hand. But that's like his only like serious injury. Yeah, so he throws on a couple of like. Knee braces. Knee braces and he yeah. gets ready to go. And uh, 
Netta, of course, cooks some tea, some some soup or whatever because they're hungry. And, uh, and <laughs> you gotta eat. You know, yeah, you can't I mean, you can't fight crime on an empty stomach. It's true. Right. Some calories. Samuels, of course, like fires up the moon copter and like Moon Knight like walks through like his trophy room. That's not his job. Right, I know, but he's. He's the only one there. I'm here. I'm just saying. Frenchie's in the hospital. That's not yeah. his job. So he wa- he walks by this wall of like st- of, of of cool, cool trophies stuff. and stuff. Yeah. S- this is all stuff from the comics. Oh really? Like yeah. That onk? Yeah. All this stuff is either Moon Knight weaponry or Moon Knight trophies that he's had okay. or worn or d- or used throughout his career in the comics. Okay. He also walks by like all the different pods that contain different versions Which of the Moon Knight. Which look almost exactly the same. Which I, one? It's hard to really argue that he's had like a menagerie of suits like Batman. Right. They're all white with shrouds. Right. And then he and then he grabs his brooch and he holds it up in the air mm-hmm. and he yells Moon Prism Power. <laughs> and he does a whole thing and yeah. becomes Moon Knight again. He spins yeah. in the 360 and then he's Moon Knight. Yeah. So he puts on a Moon Knight suit and uh, Marlene is like because in the tape, she heard like what the committee said. And they're like, right. we're going to kill everyone you ever cared about. We're going to kill Jean-Paul. We're going to kill you. We're going to kill Netta. We're going right. to kill Marlene. Everybody. And so Marlene is like, so they said they're going to kill everyone that you care about. Me, Netta, like, you know, Frenchie. What, what are you going to do about that? <laughs> and Moon Knight's like, vengeance. That's not, that's, and that's not anything. That's not actually the answer to that question. But yeah. he's going to get it. So, right. Yeah. He, but it's great because he has this big double page splash that of course has to be turned yeah, so. sideways, yeah, sideways right. to read. But he goes vengeance, and then he falls down because he's like real tired. Because he's really tired and is he? He's only been fixed just now, and it's not really a question as to whether he was fixed or not. <laughs> so Marlene helps him up, puts, him, puts in the him into the thing, and, and says, "No, but you still have to go." Yeah, you're yeah. still gonna go though. I so, mean, I don't want to fucking die. So yeah, so you better go and you're gonna ship. stop him. So he gets into this crazy awesome moon. That is awesome. I ship. guess you don't like it. So it's Taskmaster right. shows up at the committee's office, and he's like, "So you gotta you gotta fix my shield. You gotta get me new suits. <laughs> you told me that he was gonna die friendless and alone. You told me he had friends. Yeah. He was not alone. He knew how to fight me." And uh, the committee's like, but the profile said that he was going to be. And he's like, well, the profile screwed up, I guess. <laughs> because, you know, like you said that I was going to be, like, th- that I was going to be able to kick the crap out of a sitting duck. And then, like, you, you, you see Bushman, which must be, like, in uh, Spectre's head. And Bushman says, announce me. And while Taskmaster's raving in the committee's office, Spectre crashes the moon copter into the side of their building. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. In 2006, oh. in New York City. Uh. And it's great because it's referenced by Captain America later, uh. where he says, like, you chose a bad time to smash a plane into a building. Well, yeah. And I really like that. Like, yeah. Cap was like, that was pretty tacky. Yes. Yeah. Don't do that. Because there was other ways. And Cap is also a New Yorker. I just, I love that moment. It's mm. not even in this volume, and I'm still talking about it. <laughs> I just, I love that Taskmaster Shield is still at play here. Yeah, well, it gets knocked off. The... I still get wrecked. Yeah, but like... I love it because. Oh, come on! <laughs> Taskmaster's raving and, and ranting, but he's doing it from the other side of the window. So he's the window is actually against the committee. So he just sees that and he just runs away. <laughs> so the committee is murdered by yeah, this so they're smashed all dead. building. For, and then Moon Knight goes and fights Taskmaster. And Taskmaster's like, oh my god. <laughs> and he just takes his, uh, his crossbow, he just starts firing arrows into, into Spectre. And so Moon is just taking arrows into oh, his arms geez. and legs. And he's like, I can beat you, I'm better than you. Like, and he goes, yeah, kill me, kill me. See if it works this time. And just jumps at him with arrows just embedded in his body like, like freaking Boromir. I was just going to say, <laughs> that didn't really work out for Boromir, though. No. no. And Taskmaster's like, ah! <laughs> and so Moon Knight grabs his crescent moon carving knife. <laughs> Yikes. And he, he digs the face off. And you're like, oh, no, he's doing it again. But no, he just carves the mask. Right, because Taskmaster's skull... Yeah, it's not, but his real it's not his real face. Yeah, but he still took a face off, though. Yeah, that's kind of his a, thing. That's kind of his now. new thing. Yeah. So he digs... He took his face he, off. <laughs> so he rips Taskmaster's face off, revealing his true face. But like, Which is just like a scared, like almost like child-looking person. It's true. He's like, duh. <sighs> and then he just leaves him there. He grabs the profile, not the guy named Profile, the actual like, file. It looks like he just grabs a script. Yeah, it does. But <laughs> it's, a, it's a file on Mark Spector. It does everything, names, dates, oh. figures, everything. Takes it, 
and then leaves. And there's only one copy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because they're all idiots. Yep. Why does he kill Taskmaster? He hasn't killed. Oh, why, why doesn't, he? doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, because he needs Task. Because if Taskmaster dies, no one saw this. Ah. Except so for the profile who watched it happen and then immediately vomits. Because <laughs> he was wrong. Yes. <laughs> He's like, oh, and, fuck, he's going to fucking kill me. And he knows that Moon Knight's coming for him. Oh, that's awesome. So, <laughs> so uh, Spectre's like, I'm back, baby. So he goes to... See how I flew that plane to those people and fucking killed them? That was awesome. That was awesome. I also wore that sweet outfit. He's like classic Moon Knight. <laughs> yeah, so he goes to... I'm out of commission for like six months, though, from these... Dire wounds of arrows <laughs> yeah. shot into my body. But I guess I guess Kanchu Kanchu's helps. got his back. Yeah. yeah. So he shows up at Marlene's job, which of course is like excavating Egyptian artifacts for the like you know Natural sure. History Museum or whatever. Uh, and whatever. He shows up and he's like lunch. Some nerd job. Mm -hmm. So he's like lunch. He looks like the Punisher. Well, he cut his hair. Yeah. yeah. And David Finch has a problem with the same face. Ah. So. He, he he's like Marlene lunch and she's like, no. <laughs> yeah, what? You, oh, you hit me. Well, it's just like oh no, I'm sorry. You thought because you became Moon Knight again that we were all good, right? Yeah. You no, know. no. no. Um, I was wrapped up in your bullshit and they were gonna kill me, so I encouraged you to get revenge. But like, I'm not, I'm not jumping on board anymore. Yeah. And then uh, Spectre Thanks goes. Thanks for killing him though. Yeah, that was, thank that you. Helped me we're out a square lot. now. Yeah. yeah. And so then he goes to visit Frenchie, and he's like... Who's, like, significantly older than his partner. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Different yeah. strokes, I guess. Ooh. <laughs> so Roy, uh, or Rob... Yeah, Rob helps Frenchie with his new legs. And, uh, you know, Rob says something like, oh, your hair looks good. Like, to, to Spectre, because he looks, you know, right. clean cut. And uh, so Mark helps Frenchie off the table and, like, carries him. And so it's like, oh, they're, 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 they're friends again. Yay. And also, maybe Mark is using Frenchie so that he needs somebody to fly the plane. But, uh, <laughs> hey, Samuel sucked, by the way. Yeah. He, he gassed up the plane, but that was it. He couldn't fly it. Mm -hmm. So then Spectre... Uh, hey, let me fly it into a building. I yeah. can't fly this thing. <laughs> so Spectre meets with his financial <laughs> advisor. And his financial advisor is like, so, interestingly enough, all of those investments that you made with, uh, with Spectre Corp, uh, those are gone. But you did have a couple of leftover investments from your venture capital days, and recently they went through the roof. So suffice it to say, you're a millionaire again. Yay. Just by luck or by conchu? Oh. Mm. <laughs> so uh, a month goes by and you know they're, they're reporting on like how this lunatic in a white costume smashed a plane into one of New York's like high rises. Yeah. And how it's like, Moon Knight hasn't been seen for almost a month and uh, what's it called? Khonshu is like, hey, like, come on. It's all, it's been a whole month. Like, let's go. Let's yeah. get back out what there. What are you doing? And uh, Spectre turns off the TV and Crawley shows up. And he's like, Crawley, thank you so much for coming to me and kicking my ass when I needed it and telling me about, about Frenchie. Like, I really needed that. That was the kick in the pants I needed. I'm sorry. Th this guy just always has flies around him, right? Yeah. That's why. It's really gross. It's gross. But, uh, but Crawley's like, like, like but Crawley's like, hey, man, listen, like, uh, I didn't come. It was Khonshu? It was Khonshu. Oh, whoa. And that's what, like, when the when it usual suspects into Spectre, that, like, and he puts everything together, and then Khonshu's like, hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> and Spectre's like, you manipulated everything. And it's true. What happened was, and I don't think that he knows everything, but the idea is that, like, Khonshu inspired the committee. Oh. to patch a harebrained scheme. And Khonshu inspired one of the committee to screw up that scheme and encourage Moon Knight. And he, basically, wow. Khonshu needed Moon Knight back. Right. And so he orchestrated the whole damn thing. But he didn't thing. want to just ask. Right. Because no. like, that makes him look weak. He needed to get him up. <laughs> well, because it wouldn't work. Because he'd be like, fuck you, Khonshu. Yeah. Well, they doing shit for you. Well, no, I think it's just because Khonshu can't say I'm sorry. Okay, sorry, I, I, I did. I let you fall. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, th I thought you were going to get back up. Yeah. <laughs> but instead, you have to look a bitch. Oh, yeah, that's exactly right. And and so, like, Spectre grabs, like, a hammer. He smashes the face of the statue. He's like, oh. you son of a bitch, you used me. And he says, like, yeah, you quit. What was I supposed to do? Just fade away? Just, just quit with you? No. So I had to, like, work. And so, like, I'm a god. I don't fade away. <laughs> like, I fight. 
tooth and nail. You're the only priest of mine that exists on this earth. And you gotta, like, get up. <laughs> Why doesn't Contra just get a Fair new enough. priest? Because no one is as gullible and stupid as Mark Spector. <laughs> well, also, like, he's in Mark Spector's apartment. <laughs> Just like, you left me in here, and you didn't do anything with me. But yeah, if he can inspire I'm just sitting these... here for like 10 years, waiting for you to get but up on your ass. But if he can inspire ass. all these people, just inspire someone to steal it. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> no. I no. picked him. Yeah. I'm a god, I don't make mistakes. He's like, for better or worse, <laughs> you're... Like, that's kind of a cool, like, yeah. crazy interpretation. Also, like, you're my only friend. Yeah, then he leaves and he laughs at him. He's like, it's you and me, buddy. And then you have this moment of, uh, of the profile just standing in his apartment. <laughs> And then Moon Knight comes in. Is he not wearing clothes? Yeah, he's totally naked. Do you guys do that a lot? No. No. <laughs> but Profile does. The profile does. And I love it because Moon Knight grabs him and he says, Look at me and tell me what you see. And, and because every time Profile looks at somebody, he sees like all these like different things. Yeah. yeah. And he says, No! And he just screams and he goes crazy. Huh. And Moon Knight's like, Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Do you take yeah. his face too? I don't. He's holding a face. Oh no, no, it's it... just a flashback. To yeah. the face. Oh, so he doesn't rip yeah. his face off either. Like he's just, <laughs> it's just that like it's 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 flashing back to everything that happened. Because once you rip one face off, you know, you, you, yes. you're addicted. Yes. You can't stop ripping. But basically, face off. it was that you action. Rip off every face. <laughs> it was that action that inspires Spectre. It's not. Like, it's it's evidence that Spectre has gone like like fuck you, Conchu. Like I can't believe you did that. And you know what? Like who am I to argue with a god? I guess I'll fall in line. Yeah. And when he does. Conchu, by the way, Conchu also like manipulated the market to give Spectre his money. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 So Conchu then, because when Spectre goes all in on Conchu, Spectre starts to like get better, and then he goes and he like bumps into Marlene and he woos her and he gets her back. But it's false. Yeah. That's messed up. Yeah. Whoa, wait, wait. Conchu's like messing with Marlene. Yeah. To, or like, make her. Well, or he's just making. Specter say all the right things, or he's helping mm. him like get into her head. Like yeah. it's it's what he's manipulating. Or he events. was manipulating her before yeah, to, to never forgive her. him. Yeah. yeah, that she was interested in him, but like wouldn't have. That's not cool. I don't think that's. I don't. I don't know. But like. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But I see the next thing what? has to do with clocks, which also have faces. Yes. Ooh, it's all about the whole team. <laughs> the whole face Theming. thing going on. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the next arc is about this like clock themed new character but it also has to do with civil war because mm -hmm. like spider-man side is he on <laughs> and that's the idea his own like, he's on Conchu's side yeah well because he's not on anybody's side. civil war starts to break out and, like peter parker side. reveals his identity to the world and everything during right. civil war and it's great because cap shows up in specter's apartment oh and he's like, he's like i like let's have a word soldier and specter's like i was a lousy soldier yeah, let's yeah, not, not, not doing the You're not going to get me like you get Frank. Right. And uh, and he says, you know, like, you know, I saw your handiwork, mm. you know, and I'm here to tell you, like, to knock it off. Right. You and, can't pull that shit. And Spectre's funny because he says, like, you know, well, you you people are idiots. Like, I'm out there doing the real work while you and your, your, your girlfriend Stark are busy playing Capture the Fucking Flag. <laughs> Which That's is a, awesome. one of my favorite condemnations of Civil War. But then he says, why don't you you and Stark get a room and just leave the rest of us out of it? And he goes, I'm not going to join your little team. Right. And Cap says, oh, I'm not here to recruit. I'm here to say that if you do pick a side, I will take you down. I don't want you anywhere near me and my team. I don't want you anywhere near any of this. Right. Like your little, your little one-man war against whatever... I think you're insane. And like the fact that you didn't have like the taste to not crash a plane into a building says to me that you're like a grade A asshole. And it's like, oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Like, I like that. And? Yeah, and he's like, so stay out of it. And he leaves. Okay. He's like, don't go, don't be in Civil War. Well, I didn't want to be in Civil War, so that works out great. <laughs> don't have a tie in to Civil War. <laughs> well, you already are one. <laughs> Because it is. Like, it yeah, straight up was. That's what oh, it is. Like, Moon Knight's beaten the living hell out of people in an alley, and Spider-Man shows up, and he, like, stops Moon Knight from killing them. Mm. He's on the cover of the book. It's Moon Knight and Spider-Man teaming up. That's the only <laughs> scene. <laughs> Eat me. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, uh, we gotta get people to buy this book. But that's Spider-Man on the cover. Yeah, but that's the first arc of the... Res the resurrection of Moon Knight. That's, That's cool. cool. And what an arc! It like, is. It, it, That's awesome. And it, it doesn't like bury the leaves on like oh like the Contra thing we're going to reveal in like twelve issues. Like I think Houston's like I don't know if I'm going to get twelve. Right. Uh, but 
It's a great, it's a great arc. I don't, it didn't hold my interest at, like, during the clock arc, like, the, mo the, the, the greater Marvel Universe stuff, the Captain America stuff, the Mark, Mark Spector being an asshole, like, that kept me. Mm -hmm. the, the clock thing, not so much. But you mm. promised. I pro yeah. Well, it, shortly thereafter, he left the book. Oh. oh. But I stuck it out for a long time. <laughs> and, uh, and I dug it. And let me tell you something, you will too. So I'm going to put a link in the description box of this video so you can grab a copy of Moon Knight The Bottom, Volume 1 of this run. Everyone talks about, like, Warren Ellis fixed fix Moon Knight. No. Charlie Houston fixed Moon Knight. <laughs> 10 or 12 years ago. Wow. So check it out. Cool. Because it's really cool. And if anybody ever tells you, like, Moon Knight's lame and he's a second-rate Batman, like, no. No. He's crazier than Batman. He's his own he thing. is legitimately crazier than Batman. He is that. Because it's not like Batman thinks there's a bat god out there that he has Even to... Even though there is one. I know. Well, now there is. <laughs> there was one. Grant Morrison brought it all up. Oh, yeah. It made him travel through time. Yep. Batman through time. But it's not, you know what I mean, though? Like, his origins aren't because he swore to a bat god no, that he would no. avenge his parents. <laughs> yeah, nor does, like, Batman go into the cave and, like, there's a big bat that's like, it's like, Bruce, you have to go back out and do my work. <laughs> yeah, it's not like, like he, like, has a vision of his parents becoming this bat god, like, each of them. I would be like he has okay a dream of that. a gigantic animatronic bat flying at him, like. Oh, no, I don't know any interpretation <laughs> that would ever do anything like that. I like the idea that Khonshu is, like, like, not regarded... By the other gods, because he's like such a dick. I would love that. I would also love it if it was just an alien. Yeah. It was just like, this isn't a god. It's just a scroll. No, I should. I don't want to be a scroll. scroll. No, but you know. No, I like yeah. it. But I like a, it as a god, or yeah. it could be some like a like a being from another dimension. Like Strange is like, there's no, there's no Kanchu. There's no Kanchu. He just comes from the dark dimension or whatever. Yeah, yeah. he's just a dude from another. Yeah. Right, like, it's just a low-level deity of some kind from the dark dimension. Yeah. That'd be what? awesome. He's he's, a, he's he not is. even like very good at it. Yeah, he got one guy. Or he got the he most was, gullible one. Right, he ended up getting like ostracized, and he's just been living on Earth. And so like he yep. could, convinced banished, some like, Egyptians yeah. to build like a statue of him. And mm -hmm. he's just, yep. Or he just saw here that he's, he's like, hot shit. Kind of. Well, it's like, he, well, he, he, they kicked him out during the Egyptian times when they were like, yeah. cats! You know, so it's like, yeah, why not a guy who can pull parlor tricks? We'll worship you too. Right? So, yeah. Or it's like Stargate. It's like Stargate. It's one of the that, that's, that's aliens, though. Yeah, it is aliens. That's aliens. We do, by the way, have a killer Moon Knight pitch, so Marvel, if you're listening, I'm available. <laughs> yeah. But, anyway. By the way, Charlie Houston says, like, he didn't come to them. He was on the phone with someone mm -hmm. saying, like, like, you know, just having a conversation. He's like, he never thought he'd have about possibly writing a comic. Yeah. And he says, and the voice on the other end of the phone said, hey, this is a long shot, <laughs> but have you ever heard of a character called Moon Knight? Oh, shit. And he's just like, like and oh. here I am. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> have I? <laughs> have I? Yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. It's like Conchie was looking out for him. It really kind of is. <laughs> At least that's certainly how the Alfred word is written. Yeah. <laughs> man, I would love to see, yeah, man, Charlie Houston, man. Where, where are you now? What happened, Charlie Houston? Where did you go? Yeah. And will you where come back? Where are you now? <laughs> I mean, the, the, the run is good right now. Yeah. But like, you know. Charlie Houston built up Moon Knight in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> With a box of comics. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Tiffany. Thanks for watching.